Hi folks, Max Taylor here again from Caravan World and welcome to the second part of our journey through Mungo National Park. With me is camper trailer editor Emma Ryan in the Mitsubishi Pajero towing our giveaway camper trailer, the complete campsite Jabiru. And of course we've got Caravan World contributor Malcolm Street along and he's driving the Tracker Jabiru off-road motorhome. Well, what a good night's nice sleep. This Trackmaster Kimberley Platinum Series is actually really comfortable. It's got all the features you need to live comfortably off the beaten track for a good few days at a time. Come in and I'll show you what I mean. Well, so as you can see, the Trackmaster comes with a single bed layout. And, you know, it depends on how you travel, but you can imagine a situation where you've got two mates who are, you know, heading up north on a fishing trip. And in that situation, obviously they're gonna want their own space. You know, I slept in this bed right here last night really comfortable, had a great night's sleep, and I'm a tall fella, and uh, I had just enough room to ensure a good, comfortable night's sleep. Of course, the other advantage of having this single bed layout system is that the access to the storage beneath both beds is really easy. You know, you can just sort of sit down here in the middle, no problem getting to the space at the uh, right at the end. Although in this case, you can see that the um, uh, some of the storage space is actually taken up by the water heater. Not a big deal in my opinion because there's still a heap of space on offer. Not just in this bed, but this one too. This is a Waco 12 volt compressor fridge and I've got to say it's really doing us proud at the moment. We've been on the road for a good few days and everything inside has stayed nice and cold. Obviously it's powered by the house batteries which are being charged by the three 120 watt solar panels on the roof. This is a fairly straightforward manifold system for filling the water tanks. You've got two tanks on board. And let's say, for example, you want to fill tank two. Your hose goes in here, you open the valve and away you go. Or of course, you can hook the van up to mains pressure. Easy as that. So this is the uh, Hitch Easy Coupling, it's a fairly new unit with a full range of articulation, it has a 5 tonne um, capacity. Uh, the way you use it, you just uh, pull this little catch back, you give this a twist as you lower it and that allows for some uh, heavy duty ball bearings inside the main sleeve to engage with a special groove on the tow pillar that comes with the coupling. So we're going to hitch it up now, we're going to go for a, uh, a bit of a tow around National Park and we'll see how it goes. So in case you haven't guessed, the roads around these parts are all very uh, bumpy wumpy, but uh, that's okay because we've got some pretty good kit with us. Obviously the Land Cruiser tow vehicle, well that's not a problem, this uh, vehicle dispatches with the worst of it uh, with relative ease. The, the Trackmaster is fitted with sugar glider suspension, it's an independent setter. I've stepped inside uh, quite a number of vans uh, in my experience. Um, having towed them over some rough terrain and walked inside only to find things on the floor that you really don't want to be on the floor. Every time I've stepped inside the Trackmaster, however, uh, everything's been exactly where it should be. Which I think is testament to the, um, the quality of this, uh, not just the suspension setup, but also uh, the quality of the uh, furniture fixings inside. I mean, it's all put together properly by the looks of it. Uh, I mean, if anything was going to shake loose, these roads would do it. hear it but this vehicle is slightly noisier than your average passenger vehicle. It's a lot more open inside and there's a lot more fitting to turn the rattle around. Having said that, this is a very well built vehicle and the rattles are quite minimal. This, there are going to be some noise whatever you do but it's certainly better than your average motorhome for handling this sort of country and I have to say having jumped a few motorhomes that's something I appreciate very much. Yeah, this camper is made for, it's made for this kind of environment and worse. I mean, this road is quite badly corrugated in places, so you do want to make sure you've got a, a real sort of reputable, heavy duty off-road camper trailer because uh, you need good quality welds, otherwise just going over hundreds of kilometres of corrugations, a lesser camper could potentially just fall apart, which is not what you want, but um, you know, 
complete campsite, build a real sturdy off-road camper. So we got nothing to worry about. This is the Honda EU30i Handy Generator. It's a 3 kVA generator. Before we fire it up, I'll just point out a couple of the features very quickly. Uh, number one, it has an eco throttle, which means it'll use fuel very, very efficiently. And in terms of uh, fuel usage, well, we've been using it for hours and hours and hours and uh, all on the same tank of fuel. We topped it up once uh, before we left for the trip and haven't had to do so again. It's got a, um, a DC 12 volt battery charger at uh, 8.3 amps. And uh, the other handy feature of the handy generator, it comes with two uh, 15 amp caravan outlets. So this one here, that's plugged into my Trackmaster at the moment, that's charging the batteries. And uh, Malcolm Street was telling me before that his tracker Jabiroo needed a charge. So we can just plug that in. We can charge two caravans at once, not a problem. We'll just fire this up. I tell you, it's stifling hot out there at the moment, so having the generator along really just allows us to run the Dometic B3000 Plus air conditioner, gives everybody uh, a, a nice little haven to retreat to just to take the edge off. We'll just turn that on now, and away it goes. Why do they call this the handy? Well, it's got this handle right here, it makes it a lot easier for lugging around. In fact, really, folks, there's no lugging at all because it's got a couple of wheels on the back. It's just a matter of lifting it up like this and taking it back over to your car. I've been looking at wild goats out my windscreen. I've been making a cup of coffee. This is the only way to travel. I'm standing in the Trekkers Jabiru all-wheel drive slash four-wheel drive motorhome. This is a bit of a purpose-built vehicle for Bit of rough road travel. Comes with a double bed across the rear, kitchen down this side, including a fridge of course, and microwave, and a full bathroom. Very compact, but certainly you can use it quite easily. Have, of course, the onboard diesel fired cooktop, uh, diesel fired water heater, diesel fired a space heater which means there's no reliance on LPG whatsoever, it all feeds off the main uh, vehicle fuel tank. As you can see the Jabiru makes full use of the front cab seats, both of them swivel around all the way very easily and then of course having the second two seats there makes this a really good area not only for to see back but also of course having your evening meal. The Jabiru, the based on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, comes with the Menzies 3-litre turbo diesel motor. Very well engineered, punches out about 140 kilowatts of power. Very useful in the all-wheel drive motorhome. That's bolted to its six-speed gearbox, and it's a very smooth performer. And I've certainly had no problems around the roads of Munger Park. It delivers power when I need it and braking when I need it. These Pod, pod style windows are a bit of a trucker innovation. Instead of a flat side of van, they build a molded pod, which does a couple of things. One is it gives you a bit more bed length inside, it also looks really good on the outside. It also, the inside gives you a little shelf as well. So it's a very, I think, very well designed and thought out feature. As the sun set over the vast landscape, it was easy to see why this place is such an amazing part of Australia. From the beautiful moon-like pillars of the Lunette to the vast expanse of the dry lake beds, Mungo National Park is not only a culturally significant place to be part of, but it's also an exceptionally beautiful place to behold. So there you have it folks, Mungo National Park. 
we had three RVs in one sensational remote location, one big adventure, some amazing ancient history of this place. So make sure you get here, make sure you check it out. It's not too far off the bitumen, so next time you're heading up to Broken Hill or maybe down south, down to Victoria Way, be sure to come out here. Mungo National Park, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, the sun's going down. We've got to get back to camp before the roos get out. So we'll see you next time.